Hi everybody, my name is Josh Utter and I'm the Outreach Coordinator for Jesuit Refugee Service USA. It's great to be here with you today at the Ignatian Family Teaching for Justice. And although the conference is virtual this year, it's still great to connect with you. So uh, please be sure to check out our exhibit on the app to learn more about how you can get involved with JRS during this time. Please know you can always reach out to me uh, after the session to discuss ways you can get involved. Uh, with JRS. I'm always happy to talk, collaborate, brainstorm. And you can also contact me um, at my email, which is joshua.utter at jrsusa.org. The name of this session is Refugee Action Teams and how to organize your community to advocate on behalf of refugees and forcibly displaced persons. But before I get ahead of myself, I'll share with you the agenda and what to expect during the session. To start off, I'll give a general overview of Jesuit Refugee Service, JRS, and our work. I'll then share about the vision of Father Pedro Rupe when he founded JRS in 1980. I'll then explain the current state of global displacement and how it frames our work globally and in the U.S. And I'll also share about JRS USA and our work here in the United States. During that time, I'll pass it over to my, my colleague, um, Julia McPherson, JRS USA's Director of Advocacy and Operations. And she will share with you the issues we are focusing on in our advocacy work. Following Julia, I'll then share how you can take action here in the U.S. in your local community uh, to support the advocacy work of JRS. And I'll also be sure to provide some examples from current action teams that are present at Jesuit high schools and universities. To start off, what is Jesuit Refugee Service? Jesuit Refugee Service, JRS, is an international Catholic organization with a mission to accompany, serve, and advocate on behalf of refugees and other forcibly displaced persons, that they may heal, learn, and determine their own future. Today we are present in over 50 countries and serve over 800,000 refugees and forcibly displaced persons, from Latin America to Southeast Asia, Southern Africa to Europe, the Middle East to Canada, JRS has a global presence while we are an organization with Catholic roots, we serve people from all faith traditions, and our staff also represents the diversity of people we serve. No one is limited from receiving services from us. The staff at JRS is united by belief in the dignity of every human person, and our world is the common home of all. Whether in detention centers, border settings, urban centers, or refugee camps, we live and work alongside refugees of all religions and faith traditions. Our work can be broken down into a variety of program areas. We run pastoral care and psychosocial support programs in detention centers and refugee camps. We provide humanitarian relief in emergency displacement situations. Education and livelihoods programs provide skill development and opportunities for integration into host communities. And we never cease to advocate for the rights of refugees and to articulate the obligation to protect the most vulnerable among us. I'm very proud to be a part of the JRS team, and I'm always inspired by the dedication and commitment my colleagues show to the refugee community. 
And as I said, I'm really proud to be a part of the JRS team, especially uh, during this time of COVID-19. Uh, it's been a really tough time, but our team, our staff across the globe, uh, they've been very creative in their response, especially in our education work, you know, making sure that we're still able to reach our students. Uh, many of the students we serve, they don't have they might not have a laptop at home, they might not have a computer, and so we have to think of new ways to reach them. And one way, uh, you know, is over smartphones. Uh, people might have a smartphone and they'll use WhatsApp, so teachers will uh, reach out to their students there. But in some countries, uh, such as Malawi or the Central Afri African Republic, we've been able to reach our students uh, over the radio. And one, in the Central African Republic, one way that we've been able to reach the students is this program called The School on the radio uh, and it's every weekday evening uh, just some time for students to learn maybe a little bit about COVID um, and how to prepare and how to um, practice public health uh, guidelines and all of that but it's also a way for students to learn learn the language learn French you know many of the students they might speak another language so it's a great way for them to practice their French and so I'm not going to speak much more I'll pass it over uh, to my to a JRS student her name's uh, Mirabelle and she'll be able to share a little bit more about our work on the radio. inspired the founding of JRS. Father Pedro Rupe, then Superior General of the Jesuits, founded JRS in 1980. Around that time, Father Rupe was deeply moved by the images of people fleeing Vietnam, often by boat. Although the Vietnam War had ended in 1975, it was not until 1979 that great numbers of people began to leave the country and seek refuge elsewhere through clandestine, risky journeys by sea. At that time, Father Arupe appealed to Jesuit major superiors for practical assistance. The spontaneous and generous first wave of action provoked him to reflect on how much more the Society of Jesus could do if its response to this and to other contemporary crises of forced human displacement were planned and coordinated. From that initial sentiment has grown a worldwide service to forcibly displace people on November 14, 1980, Father Rupe's birthday, he announced the birth of Jesuit Refugee Service. Today, we continue Father Pedro Rupe's initial vision of accompanying, serving, and advocating on behalf of refugees and forcibly displaced persons. That is our mission today, and we invite you to join us in it. So to see if you're paying attention, can you tell me, maybe you can message me in the chat, when is Father Pedro Rupe's birthday? Well, to give a hint, it's the same day as JRS's birthday. Uh, November 14th is the birthday of both Father Pedro Rupe and JRS. So in November 2020, next month, uh, JRS celebrates its 40th anniversary, meaning it's been 40 years of accompaniment, service, and advocacy on behalf of the refugee community. Things have changed dramatically since 1980. The number has increased of forcibly displaced people worldwide. So that's why it's important for us to examine our past and see how has the current context of global displacement changed since the founding of JRS in 1980. As I go forward, it's important to point out that 
My source is UNHCR, the United High Commissioner for Refugees. Every year, UNHCR puts out a report on World Refugee Day, which is June 20th. And in that report, they include all the numbers from the previous year of forced global displacement. In 2019, 79.5 million people are currently forcibly displaced from their homes as a result of persecution, conflict, violence, or human rights violations. Within that number, children make up 40% of forcibly displaced people. One uh, dramatic increase uh, in 2019 was that 2 million new asylum claims were submitted in 2019. And if you're wondering who makes up the 79.5 million people, in that number, uh, internally displaced people are included. So people who have been displaced within their own country. One example is Syria. The civil war there has displaced many people around the country. That number of internally displaced persons globally is 45.7 million people. The next group is refugees. And the refugees are people who have left their home country and crossed the border into another country. That number is 26 million people. And then there are asylum seekers, uh, 4.2 million people. Those are people who have left their country and they're at the border of another country or the port of entry and they're, they're filing a claim for asylum. That's once again, 4.2 million people. And then within this number of 79.5 million people, there's also 3.6 million Venezuelans who have been displaced abroad. But the thing to know is that Venezuelans also fit in, this, in the refugee numbers and the asylum seekers number. This 3.6 million Venezuelans displaced abroad, that's just the people who haven't been counted or who have a regular status. If you wanna learn more about internally displaced persons, refugees, uh, asylum seekers, be sure to check out our resource, uh, We Don't Walk Alone, uh, which you can find linked to on our exhibit profile on the app. And there you can learn more about these different groups. As we look at these numbers, it's also important to know that um, where they're coming from, where are refugees coming from, 68% uh, of refugees originate from just five countries, uh, those countries being Syria, Venezuela, Afghanistan, South Sudan, and Myanmar. And then in the U.S., we often uh, hear this rhetoric or ha hear the story being told that, you know, the U.S. is taking on too many refugees. Well, the reality is, is that most refugees are in countries that are neighboring their home country. So. The top five countries for refugees, you see Turkey, Colombia, Pakistan, Uganda, you know, Syrians and Turkey. The U.S., meanwhile, has lowered our number. Uh, historically, our ha average um, resettlement number was 95,000. Uh, recently, uh, the president set a presidential determination of only 15,000 refugees being resettled in fiscal year 2021. That's the lowest on record, uh, and it's a huge threat to the refugee resettlement program. These numbers uh, set a context that frames our work. Depending on the situation, we work to provide a response that addresses some of the greatest needs of forcibly displaced people. Whether it's a school, a primary school and a refugee camp, or attorneys at the border to assist with asylum claims, JRS is there to provide a service that reassures forcibly displaced people that they are not alone in this journey. I work for Jesuit Refugee Service USA and we are based in Washington, D.C. But what exactly do we do here in the U.S.? I'll pass it over to my colleague, Julia McPherson, to share more about our advocacy work. But before we go to her, some important other details to know about JRS USA is that we do fundraising here in the U.S. to support our programs overseas, whether that's from private donors or writing grants to receive funding from the federal government. We also have a chaplaincy program that provides pastoral care to people who are detained in ICE detention centers. We are also soon to start a mental health and psychosocial care program on the US-Mexico border. And there are more details to come on that as the program develops. All right, that's enough from me. And now Julia, JRS's Director of Advocacy and Operations will talk about our advocacy work, specifically focusing on the issues of asylum, refugee resettlement and refugee education. My name is Julia McPherson. I'm the Director of Advocacy and Operations at Jesuit Refugee Service USA. I'm here just to tell you a bit about our advocacy work, both here in the US and around the world. Not only is JRS an organization that directly serves refugees in all of the countries where we operate, 
but we really prioritize advocacy as well. Our mission statement is to accompany, serve, and advocate on behalf of refugees. So in addition to doing direct programming, like offering education services, livelihoods programming, mental health and psychosocial support, it's crucial for us to look at the systemic and structural ways that we can really create change in the lives of refugees around the world. And what that looks like is advocating on behalf of their rights and speaking out with them and for them directly with our policymakers, looking at our governments and structural systems that we have access to. So in terms of what we do day to day here at JRS USA, what we try to do is amplify the work that our colleagues are doing around the world, to listen to them, to collect stories from them about the challenges that refugees are facing in the communities where they're living and where we're working. By listening to them, we're then able to develop what we call advocacy messages about what donor governments, what host countries, what other practitioners, other organizations like JRS could be doing to improve the lives of refugees around the world. Then we take those messages, those advocacy messages, directly to our policymakers. And here in the US, that means the administration, that means Congress, so both the House of Representatives and the Senate. We take those messages to those leaders who really have direct impact on decisions that are being made on behalf of refugees. So we can impact policy, U.S. policy as it relates to refugees. We can impact the amount of funding that the U.S. government provides to refugees overseas. And it's important for our policymakers to not only hear from advocates and JRS staff like myself, but for them to hear from you, from their constituents. So I'd like to highlight three issues that we are focusing on that we think are really critical to the lives of refugees around the world and three issues that if you could learn a little bit more about them today, then you will be better positioned to take action on their behalf in the future. The first issue is asylum, access to asylum around the world, but in particular here in the US. So right now, unfortunately, anyone arriving at the US southern border will not be able to petition for asylum here in the US. The current administration already placed a number of barriers to asylum over the past year or so, including one that you may have heard of called Remain in Mexico, where someone arriving at the border petitions for asylum, then gets returned to Mexico to wait for their asylum petition to be heard and considered. Now, since the beginning of COVID-19 back in March, the U.S. government entirely closed the borders to asylum seekers and migrants. So those arriving at our border are stopped immediately. They're not able to even petition for asylum. This includes families, this includes unaccompanied children, and there are tens of thousands of them waiting now at the border for their petition to be made and for the, their cases to be heard. So the issue of asylum is critical to our organizational intent to protect humanitarian needs, to protect the rights of refugees, to protect those who come to places like the U.S. seeking protection. They're often fleeing from violence and persecution, and the legal structures that we have in place do offer the opportunity for them to receive protection from the U.S. In addition to asylum, another sort of issue that's right in our backyard is refugee resettlement. This is another protection measure offered to refugees around the world who are particularly vulnerable. The UN Refugee Agency has identified about a million and a half refugees from around the world for resettlement. They've recommended them for resettlement. This means that these particularly vulnerable refugees might be unaccompanied children. They might have family members already in the United States that they would like to be reunited with or they might have a medical condition that can't be taken care of in the country where they're living. Historically, the US has resettled about 95,000 refugees every year on average. This year, unfortunately, we're only resettling 18,000. And with our new fiscal year just starting a few days ago, the administration is recommending that that number drop to 15,000. So this is a dramatic, dramatic cut in the number of refugees that the U.S. would welcome here in the United States. This is an issue that the U.S. government has direct impact on, that you as a constituent could voice your concerns about and have a direct impact on. 
So it's an issue that we as JRS, a refugee-focused organization, care a lot about and hope that you'll join us in speaking out about the importance of the U.S. increasing the number of refugees that we resettle every year. And finally, the third issue I wanted to bring to your attention is that of education. So many of you are at a Jesuit institution. You're at a Jesuit school, a high school, or a university. And so you know the important role that education plays in the life of a Jesuit-inspired or Jesuit-educated person. That's no different in the work that JRS does around the world. We're currently delivering education programs for preschool, primary, secondary, and even higher education students. And so this work is critical to giving hope to refugees who really rely on an education for them to be able to think about their future, provide for their families. And so the U.S. government has an important role in making that reality come true as well. Through our policies, through the kind of funding that the U.S. government supports, we can speak out on encouraging the U.S. to prioritize education programs and to make sure that the U.S. government is contributing enough funding to support those kinds of programs. So those are the three issues that I wanted to draw attention to today. Finally, again, the way that you can take action is by supporting organizations like JRS and the opportunities that we put forward in terms of becoming an advocate. If you go to our website at jrsusa.org, go to Take Action, and you'll see that you can send letters to your policymakers today on all three of those issues that I mentioned. A letter, an email might seem simple, but it's important. Policymakers are paying attention to their constituents. They're paying attention to the number of emails they receive on a particular issue. So you can take action today by going to our website. If you sign up for our advocacy list, we'll also let you know when there's a late breaking or urgent issue that's come up that we'd like you to take action on as well. So we look forward to partnering with you. We look forward to your support and please stay in touch. Thank you, Julia. So what can we do in our local community to advocate on behalf of refugees and forcibly displaced persons? Julia already highlighted some great ways to raise your voice, such as writing a letter to your representative. But there's so much more you can do. Here at JRS, we believe in the power of numbers. So consider organizing a group of colleagues and friends to form a team that raises awareness of the issues and advocates with and on behalf of the refugee community. Be sure to check out our Refugee Action Team Toolkit, which is available on our website or on the app. And you can also reach out to me if you, need, if you have any questions or want to learn more. It's also important that you check out what other groups are doing in your community. Is there a refugee resettlement agency already doing advocacy work? Is there a migrant advocacy group already doing that work? Could you join them and amplify their voice? And could you volunteer with a local refugee resettlement agency so you can come to know the refugee community that lives in your area? It's so important that you establish these connections within your community. It's also important that you be creative. Don't be boxed into a certain way of raising awareness. You're not limited to writing letters to your senator. You could host an event, you could organize a social media campaign, you could develop an educational resource. That's why it's so important to build relationships within your community, for you'll be able to collaborate and strategize so your work can have an even greater impact. Current JRS action teams do great work to, add, to raise awareness on their campus. One school I'd like to lift up is Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama. The JRS action team on their campus has partnered with a local nonprofit Dwell Mobile to welcome resettlement refugees, well, to welcome refugees that have been resettled, excuse me, on their campus for an evening program that includes a shared meal, English lessons, and recreational activities for children. It's a really great way to get together, to learn from each other, and to also have fun. Spring Hill students help organize the programming and interact directly with the refugee community. It's a great way to build relationships and come to know more about the refugee experience. Hello, my name is Karolina Takashal and I am a senior nursing major here at Spring Hill College. I am the president of the Jesuit Refugee Service Action Team and we have a very unique opportunity being that we get to work firsthand with the resettled refugees in Mobile. We have partnered with an organization named Dwell Mobile that provides many different services to refugees. Every week we host a program called Foundations Classes. 
Here we teach these new members of our community English, how to take citizenship tests, driving classes, and for the kids, we do art activities, trauma interventions, and overall, we form relationships. Forming relationships with resettled refugees in our area is number one. We host events throughout the year, like Cultural Night, where we invite all of our 12 participants to bring a dish that represents their culture, and we have a talent show that the whole school is invited to. This past year, we hosted the event Walk a Mile, and also had a guest speaker from Columbia come and share his story with the campus. We attend kids' birthday parties, soccer games, and even weddings if you get lucky. This is how we're able to truly make a difference in their resettlement and aid them in making a home here in Mobile. On every special day, one very special day we had that touched my heart was when we took the kids to the beach. At first, it seemed like such a simple gesture since we live on the Gulf Coast. But once we arrived, it was astounding. It was the very first time every single one of these kids had ever seen the ocean. They hugged all the volunteers involved. They screamed of joy and to this day have not stopped talking about it. This is what JRS partnering partnering with Dwell is about. It's about making connections and going beyond the classroom or a call. It's about making memories and friendships and making this city our home. Throughout my three years being here, I know that it's transformed my heart into something I never would have imagined. I encourage you all to look for the refugee and immigrant communities in your city because it will truly make for a better world. And this is what JRS is all about. Building a relationship is a great way, a critical way to inform your advocacy. So I can't emphasize the importance of doing outreach and volunteering within your own community. Another school I'd like to lift up is Walsh Jesuit High School. There, their JRS action team does a great job of inviting the greater school community to participate in their activities. So be sure to continue to let others know what you are doing. If you form a team, if you gather your group of friends and you guys have all these great ideas, don't let it be limited to just yourselves. Make sure you spread the word, you share with others. Because you might be a focused small team, but be sure to invite the wider community to join you in your activities. There is power in numbers. Some other JRS resources that might be helpful for you if you're uh, thinking about starting an action team include the Walk a Mile Refugee Awareness Exercise. Uh, we have a toolkit available on the app, but also on our website. It's a great way for you to uh, bring um, a learning ex an experiential activity to your campus uh, and to allow others to learn a little bit more about the process of displacement. Uh, and like I said, other schools have done it in the past. It's a great resource. Uh, check it out on our website. We also recently embarked on a uh, challenge uh, earlier in October. We started on October 6th uh, called 40 Miles for Refugees. Uh, registration is, of course, closed, but it was a great way for people to get moving, but also learn more about the refugee experience. Uh, it might be something that you could rep replicate at your school, you know, organize your own challenge on behalf of the refugee community. We also have plenty of spiritual resources. So if you go onto our website and you go to resources, uh, you can find some great prayers. Uh, one prayer I want to lift up is a, is a prayer card that features Father Pedro Rupe. Uh, if you want a copy, just reach out to me and I'm happy to send you one. And then another big thing that's coming up, like I said before, uh, November 14th is JRS's birthday. It's Pedro Rupe's birthday and it's also JRS day. So it's a big day for us to uh, commemorate the work of JRS to raise up uh, the work of my colleagues all across um, the globe to really just lift up the work of JRS, but also the people we serve and accompany. So if you want to learn more about JRS Day, go to www.jrsusa.org slash JRS Day. And there you can find lots of great resources to get you ready. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope this session helped you learn more about JRS and how you can get involved with us. Uh, and thanks for bearing with me. Uh, during this recording. <laughs> it's something I'm learning. So this is great. This is great. Uh, but just be sure to invite others to join you in this journey. Don't don't leave your your action team just to like just yourself, you know, uh, reach out to other people, bring them along with you. Uh, it's done best in a team that is organized, focused and committed to its cause. And again, thanks for listening. Please reach out to me with questions. I'm happy to strategize with you and support your commitment to advocating on behalf of refugees and other uh, forcibly displaced persons. 
All right. Peace. Thank you.